We're live! Yay. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Daria Rose. That was weird to say. And um, I haven't done a public chat in a really long time that was just by me, but uh, welcome. I'm glad you all can make it. I, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to know who's here, but um, hopefully you can hear us and hopefully you enjoy it. So basically, today we have a special guest, my buddy Graham Hancock, who works with my husband Kevin over at Google Ventures and also uh, does his podcast foundation and used to work over at Revision 3 and do all the amazing stuff he did over there. So welcome, Graham. Hey, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. This is cool. This is cool. <laughs> and uh, you're here today because you have an amazing story. So you're actually one of the very first people who read my book, Foodist. Right. And I didn't even know you had it. I gave it to <laughs> I think Prager stole a copy when he came you gave it to You gave it to... Prager, our, uh, David Prager, our mutual friend, and I saw it at his house. I'm like, is that Daria's book? He goes, yeah, do you want to borrow it? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Because I was kind of already halfway into my, my you know, goal of losing weight. I was like, I wonder, I bet I need to read this now. I'll get a jump on before the book comes out. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, so we're going to talk today. So you have recently experienced a pretty impressive weight loss. Why don't you... Uh, tell us what you've done so far, or just tell. Wait, well, let's see. You get you lost thirty five pounds, is that right? Yeah. Since you started, so, so yeah. why don't you tell me or tell everybody? Because um, I think this is a very relevant story for a lot of people that are probably mm. watching. I know a lot of my fans are pretty geeky, and a lot of your fans are pretty geeky. And I think just in general, a lot of us sit around at a computer all day long eat whatever's nearby or whatever anybody yeah. else is eating and don't really think about it and then look down one day and you're like, uh, I could be healthier and this right. is not cool so I want to sort of bring, bring this in. But it can be really tough when you're really busy and really focused on work and when you're totally. video games and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. If you're um, explaining so me, like <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing, uh, just working at a computer you know, all day. I would That was my day job was working at a computer and I would come home and I would just get at another computer or sit in front of the TV. So I was always in front of a screen. I would never go out. Uh, that was probably my number one worst uh, habit was being so sedentary. I never really exercised much or had any outdoor activities. So that was one of the things that was so obvious that I needed to change. Um, but yeah, I come from a, an area of the country um, that's kind of known for having greasy food. Uh, from, I'm originally from Mississippi and I you know, growing up there, like literally breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's something that's fried or has been dipped in, in, in butter or something like that. And so I just, I, I kind of got a bad start because, you know, that's just the cuisine I was used to. And when I came out here, I saw all the great stuff to eat in San Francisco and never thought twice about getting something that seemed like it was unhealthy because I was so used to that kind of food. Um, and it kind of, you know, add that sort of habit to the habit of not getting any exercise and you quickly gain a lot of weight, uh, which is what I did. I think uh, I was around 218 pounds before I started to lose weight again. And so, and for the most part, the entire time I'd been out here in San Francisco, I had never been under 200 pounds. So that was kind of a milestone when I finally got below that. And I was like, well, I'm kind of, kind of on my way now. Um, but yeah, that's 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 sort of my my history in terms of like getting a bad start ge geographically and, and cuisine wise, uh, and then coming out here and having a few bad habits that added up. So I'm curious, what changed? Like, what in your head, and what, like, what's the backstory where you like one day decide like I need to do something about this? There was a time, and it literally, I started in like mid. December, near the end of December, kind of deciding, okay, I need to do something about this. And it was because I think there were two or three weeks at the end of last year where I was feeling really sick. And I could not figure out what it was. Um, it's, it felt like a cold, but I, was, but I had no energy. So I started really worrying that it might be like blood sugar or some kind of, you know, diabetes type you know, a, a, you know, pre-diabetes, that kind of stuff. And that really kind of shocked me, it woke me up to be like, okay, that, and, and it turns out that's not what it was. It was just a, a really bad, like, virus. But, but I, st I got in my head about that, and I started thinking, you know what, I'm not that far off from having those types of problems because I'm, I weigh this much more than I should. I'm not active. And so that kind of, that kind of shocked me into wanting to change 
uh, thing. Yeah. So and then, and you're, you're how old? I'm, tw I'll be 27 this Saturday. Okay. I think that's, yeah. oh, okay. Happy <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I think that's around when a lot of people start realizing that like they're not going to be young forever. Yeah. And, then and everyone, everyone tells you, oh, it gets so much old. harder to lose weight when you're, uh, when you're over that age. And, and so I was like, I should start now or things are going to get a lot more difficult. Awesome. And so what did you decide to start with? Because I know like for a lot of people, I think this could be a really, really daunting, scary thing. Yeah. You feel like you have to overhaul your life. So I, you know, Tell us a little bit about how you got started and how you started seeing results. Really, I, I got started doing something that made a lot of sense to me. There's a lot of cool technology that's coming out right now about that lets you track how active you're being and how much weight you're losing, and you get to see graphs and charts and all that stuff really interested me. So one of the first things I did was buy a Withing scale and a Fitbit and a Jawbone and, and started uh, tracking how much I was... Uh, I was walking a day, and so I started realizing, oh, well, if I can just get 10,000 steps a day, that's five miles a day. That's more than I was ever getting. Um, and so that was sort of my start. Uh, the scale also helped me track, like, okay, I'm either gaining or losing. Um, and that was probably, I, I use that every single day, and that's been, like, the number one thing that I most am, ha like, that I'm happy that I have. Um, right. The, so being able to track that stuff, that was my original thing. Like, this is going to be fun because I can kind of make it into a little bit of a game for myself uh, and challenge myself each day to do something a little bit more. And that's what it ended up being. I ended up being a lot more active because of the Fitbit. And a lot more. And, and I ended up... Um, and then when I was thinking about, okay, what else can I do? Because I, I started feeling better. And I was like, well... That was pretty easy, just to kind of like be able to track that. So, what other things can I start piling on to to kind of up up the game? And so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you real quick. And I just I'm just curious, um, when you how hard was it to when you started with the ten thousand steps? Because that's something I recommend in the book. I have like a yeah. whole section on how that is a game changer. Ten thousand steps a day. Most people don't realize. I think they get around. If you don't work out, you don't do anything. Most people hit around three thousand steps yeah, a day. Three or four, maybe. yeah. Maybe less. If you go to the gym but are still sedentary all day, mm -hmm. I get around six to seven thousand steps a day. I have to go a little farther. I have to take my dog toaster right. up to the park. I have to walk to the gym and back. You know, instead of just taking the car, or the bus, or whatever. So, uh, how hard was it for you to find that time and that energy to to add that to your life? Yeah. I did, I did a thing where the day that I got it, I put it on and wore it all day and didn't tr look at it the whole day. And I wanted to know, okay, by the end of the day, how many steps have I been getting on average? And I looked at it, and I think it was somewhere around three or four, like a high three, low four. And then I was like, huh, so I have to do a lot more walking. So what are, what, where can I start adding in walks? So I, you know, I, I'm over at Google on their main campus, so there's lots of cafes. I would usually go to the closest one. So then I was like, you know what, maybe I go to the furthest one and I have my Fitbit on and make those steps count. So that was the, that was one thing and I started walking, uh, when I started adding in that, I was like, oh, now I'm at 7,000. That wasn't so hard and that was just a quick walk to lunch and back. Um, and then, uh, you know, usually, usually I can hit the 10,000 without actually going out and going for a run. Uh, but when I started to do daily runs, that that made it s just super easy. Like you'd hit ten thousand, you know, without even thinking, because you're running two or three miles there. So awesome, yeah. And and I'm curious too how uh, this how you use the scale because I, that's another thing I, I I'm a big fan of. I use yeah. both the Fitbit and the Fitbit <laughs> scale. And the Withing scale, I literally have two <laughs> Wi-Fi yeah, scales so you can over cross my back. <laughs> Cross-check their data. Because <laughs> one of them's more accurate on body fat because yeah. I have mine tested a bunch, and the other one is like it, it integrates better with my system. Yeah. So anyway, but I'm uh, I think yeah, I'd love to hear how you use it. Like for instance, will you like notice a difference between Friday and Monday after like a crazy weekend or after working out oh, more absolutely. versus working out less? Or... It becomes a thing where if you 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 want you want to weigh yourself every morning regardless of whether you know it's going to be bad or it's going to be good because it's because you get that graph and you can kind of chart your progress that was what uh, intrigued me the most is that no matter what and and I, I wish I could share the screen but I have the my profile and with things it's just amazing to watch it go from 217 
and then and have like a curve all the way down. And that's just it's just a visual representation of all the hard work you've put in. Um, and that's that's what I enjoy most about it. That's awesome. Yeah. And then so I think you were gonna go on to say what um, dietary changes you've made. Oh yeah, that's. I, I had a lot of bad habits, uh, and that was one of them was fast food. I would I would be bored. I, I, I would be uh, home late, and so didn't feel like cooking. So I would just hop in the car and drive to In and Out or McDonald's or something like that. And that was probably my number one worst habit. Um, and definitely found the willpower to stop doing that. And and after a while, it didn't matter because I found some healthy foods that I liked. Um, and I started sticking to those, and once I got onto those, I didn't want the fast food anymore. Um, it was tough. Like there, there, are, fast food withdrawals are a real thing <laughs> because of all the stuff they put in it. And uh, but once I started eating healthier stuff, like that stuff started tasting better, and the fast food didn't seem as appealing. And that's I haven't touched fast food since I started losing weight. I mean, I, I, I'm not the type of person that's like, oh, I can't have at least like one burger every once in a while. I don't think it's um, a terrible thing to, to every once in a while treat yourself. Um, I don't feel like I'm on a diet, um, even though that's, you know, I've changed my, my eating habits, which is technically what a diet is, but I don't feel like I am because I'm not being really super, super hard on myself. That's why I came up with the word health style, because yeah. <laughs> diet is just too confusing. They're like, oh, what diet are you on? It's like, no, 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 no. You can't do that, do it that way, because that way yeah. is horrible. And I think um, you made an excellent point, which is that you have to find foods that are healthy that you like. Yeah. And I think that was that my it, biggest thing. It uh, sounds hard both. to do, but isn't it like way better? It's like it is way better if you like it. I never so growing up where I grew up, it was all fried food. We would I would I would pass on salads at when we eat out and all that stuff. I never really ate much green stuff and I got out uh, here and after making this decision started trying out stuff even if I knew I didn't like it back when I was uh, much much younger but I come to find out like I don't know what happens with age but you end up liking stuff that you hated when you were a kid so I'm eating Brussels sprouts when I used to hate them broccoli when I used to hate broccoli um, my my biggest thing was spinach I didn't realize I'd never really had much spinach growing up but I didn't realize it but I really like it uh, chopped like and as a salad, as a side, whatever, my main meal when I was losing weight was just a little bit of spinach, olive oil, pepper, and some smoked salmon. And that's like, that was my, my go-to this whole time. And I, I thought it tasted awesome. I wasn't getting tired of it. Um, and I just, I just discovered really healthy foods that I, that I could eat often and not get tired of. Um, and I'm still discovering. Like I still haven't tried beets. Never. I don't think I've ever tried eating beets, but apparently they're really good for you too. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm curious what what you needed in your brain because I, I get this a lot. A lot of people yeah. are like, well, what if I just don't like vegetables? It's like, do you really not like vegetables, or do you just have you just always had crappy vegetables because your mom yeah. served canned, boiled, frozen garbage? Right. That's what happened to me, I'm sure. We just had canned veggies my whole life. So um, there were definitely, I mean, I'm sure there were farmers markets around, but like we definitely didn't shop there. Um, that's something that I, so when I started shopping for more healthy, fresher food, I would go to Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's was definitely my, my go-to um, to get stuff from there. And so I have a Safeway across the street. And that's that's fine too. Like whenever I re really I'm out of something, I really quickly need to go get something good. Um, but I really like some of their their stuff. It tastes better, I th think. Um, and from reading foodist, I'm like, I have to go to the farmers markets now. <laughs> like I really want to try that out because because that I believe it. You know, like that some vegetables can taste better than others depending on how fresh they are or where they're from. Um, I think that is so key. Like it's it, that was what's made me start my blog. Basically, was I went to the farmers market. And I bought food I knew I liked. You know, like I had no trouble with fruit. You know, right. peaches are great. But I never had a fruit in season from a farmer who like really cares. And it's more expensive, but like if you're actually liking your vegetables and you actually enjoy cooking more because it's it's like more interesting and it's more fun. I think you know if you can afford it, like that difference is it's well well worth it, especially when you see the results by looking in the mirror and the way you feel yeah. and um, I think that's that's really important message for people to to take in it's like these this 
the vegetables, the healthy, gross vegetables we're eating, if you get them from someplace good, they taste good. They don't have. They should right. be sweet. Like in the springtime, all the greens should taste sweet. Yeah, not bland or like cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> or bitter. Or bitter, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really cool, and I, I'm I'm impressed that you had sort of had that foresight that it was like, well, I didn't like this at home, or maybe I never really tried it, and maybe I should give it another chance. And I I wish more people would do that. Picky eating is one of those things that just drives like one of my pet peeves. <laughs> it just drives yeah. me nuts because like, no, 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 you don't know what you're missing. I think what got me on on the right track and thinking that way is I went out to a place here in San Francisco with a group of people and they ordered uh, a really fresh batch of Brussels sprouts for the table. And I'm like, you know what, I really hated these things when I was little. I'm just going to try one though. And I tried it and I'm like, this is amazing. I had never thought they could taste like this. And so, and, and then I started thinking, well, maybe maybe my preconceived notions about the vegetables that I hate is just because I was not getting, you know, was not enjoying what I had back home and, and now I should you know go through all of them and see if I like them better than I used to so and it turns out a lot of them I did yeah and then that, that's really awesome and I'm impressed that you did that and so once you sort of realized that you liked vegetables and you started eating them you, you know you're, it sounds like you started jogging mm -hmm. and at a certain point did like was it just a sort of constant weight loss or was did it take a while for it to start or did it all it fall took, off at once or it took a good week to get going I did well I'd say a little bit longer than that because I started out by walking every day uh, to do the Fitbit stuff and I would see results but it was very slow it was like over I'd lose maybe one to one and a half pounds a week or something like that um, and then I started once I felt good enough to start trying to jog because I knew I didn't want to burn myself out I didn't want to try to jog and then like only jog a mile and be out of breath and go home and so what I did is I started walking a little bit and then I would jog until I felt like I needed to walk again and then jog and, I, and that way I was able to kind of sustain it and would run about two or jog about two miles a day and I felt like that was enough and I was only doing it every other day at the time and then I was like you know what I'm feeling good enough now and I'm eating well and like I have a lot of energy that I feel like I, like this could contribute to, I was like, I'm going to challenge myself next week to run three miles every day. Um, and so starting that Monday, I went out and ran three miles. I was really tired at the end of that first one. But after that, I was. Uh, what got me was the feeling after pushing myself that hard. Uh, it, like while you're doing it, you're in, it just feels like, ah, what am I doing? This is awful. I feel terrible. But when you're done and you've hit that, that goal and you're back at your house like, uh, you know, getting freshened up, and it, I felt amazing after that. And I, and I could go back, uh, go back out with friends after that because I ran, I run in the evenings. Um, just I'm not a morning person, that's why. Um, so I run in the evenings. I'd, I'd go back out after that and just be feeling great. Um, and so got got used to that feeling. Um, so after a couple of days of running three miles a, a day, I noticed that the weight was just plummeting. I was, I think, at one point. I lost five pounds one week, which I think is wow. like not. I mean, most of that was probably water weight and things like that. But, um, but usually two to three pounds a week once I would start running every day, not or, or jogging every day. But not, I wouldn't say that I would have to do that necessarily. Um, it was it was changing the, the bad habits that that made it made this work because I could I could eat a burger and go run and it's not going to do anything. Uh, but like. Uh, I, I feel like I didn't have to run as much as I did to lose the weight, but I just made myself lose it faster because I set that kind of uh, that kind of goal for myself. Sure, and I think it's awesome that you mentioned that that you had to go slow, and I, I think this is something that a lot of people miss because I, what I see a lot of is people deciding, and, and you know, TV makes this worse. Like shows like The Biggest yeah. Loser, like I see people decide that. I need to get fit, so I'm gonna torture myself at the gym. Right. I'm gonna sign up for boot camp at like 5 a.m. and like That's have some me. like meathead kick my butt in the park for two hours, and so you're depleted all day. You don't feel good after that. You just feel weak, and you and it makes yeah. you you know it's like this humiliation culture almost where yeah. it's like you wuss, you know. Why aren't you give me one more push up or I'm gonna yeah. step on your face? You know, it's, I think that's horrible, and it doesn't get you to where you need to be, which is just fit enough to the point where you actually enjoy working out and you actually enjoy, like you said, maybe not necessarily the whole thing, but you you feel horrible if you miss it because it's just you miss that feeling of 
feeling, it feels like your body is clean and you feel strong and you feel yeah. confident and it's beautiful and, and I'm glad that you've experienced that. And most people who don't like working, I think, just haven't got there yet and I think they need to get there I think that was, that was the big turning point for me where it's like for the first few weeks it was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to push myself to do this, but then there was that turning point of, oh, I'm starting to feel great after I do this and now I kind of want to do this every day and now I feel bad if I don't. Yeah, that's absolutely what happened to me. So this is really interesting. Now we've talked mainly about uh, things you've added. So we talked about you adding the walking and then adding yeah. or the Fitbit, adding the scale, adding the workouts, and then adding mm -hmm. the fresh food. But you said that the most important thing is still getting rid of some bad habits. So how did you? How were you able to break those those things that you feel like would, would be holding you back otherwise? I think um, once I started. And what are they? Uh, yeah. And what are those habits? I think what what started to happen is I started seeing the positive outcome happening. I started getting compliments from other people, and once once that had started happening to me, I was like, I I don't want to go back to those old habits because I'm clearly on the right track. You know, people are starting to notice. I'm starting to get you know high fives from folks that knew me when I was a certain weight. Um, and so that was the biggest factor, I think, because it kind of held myself accountable where it's like, I don't want to go back to that weight because I've made these people kind of proud of me. And you know, so that was, that was kind of a big, a big deal too. Um, in terms of specific habits like the fast food and all that stuff, I think that it was just sort of kind of just, I'm just not going to do this. I did set a specific goal for myself to lose um, to, or to get to a certain weight by my 27th birthday, which is this Saturday. Um, and I think that goal was 175. I'm at 180 now, so it doesn't look like I'm going to make it. But I don't at this point like I've gotten all I'm you know 90 percent there, and you know it's all the good that has happened because of this has already happened. I'm I'm feeling great. A lot of people are you know telling me you know that that they've noticed, and and that's that's been probably the most uh, effective way of me not going back to the old habits and cutting out all of that stuff. Interesting. So it wasn't necessarily your, you know, the, it's not that you don't want to do those things anymore. It's just that you've you've had enough positive feedback that you're right. Your it's like I, I just could changed. leave right now and go to In-N-Out and get some animal style fries. But it's like it's I've gotten enough to the point now where it's like I really like I feel like I'd be cheating myself and some of the other people that have been kind of cheering me on if I went back to doing some of that stuff. So I, I have to you know, still kind of get out and do the 10,000 steps. I, I don't want fast food, you know. And when I eat out, I'm definitely looking for things that aren't quite as uh, uh, unhealthy. Do you, still make, do you still make room for those things on occasion? Or is that oh, yeah. waiting for... Absolutely. I, f I feel like I did kind of a mix of foodist and maybe four-hour body in that on Saturdays I kind of don't... Like I, on Saturdays, I won't really be super picky about things, and I'm not always super picky about things. It's just that on Saturday, I might have some a sandwich with some bread on it, and so, you know, like, and not mm -hmm. and not uh, worry about uh, the sugar, sugars, and some of the stuff that I'm eating. But definitely throughout the week, I'm kind of like, you know, I, I you know, if I'm not, if I can find a way to not have a lot of sugar, then that'll go a long way in losing another pound or two this week, and. That's that's usually my thought process, but I don't really, I'm not really hard on myself on the weekends. So I, I think that's really healthy. I think yeah. that constantly depriving yourself is emotionally and psychologically taxing. Yeah, and it there it actually can really backfire. I I'm, you, I'm sure you read the chapter, um, yeah. chapter two on willpower. It it most people think that that's what you need to do to lose weight and to get healthy is to just be really good all the time. But I eat whatever I want on weekends because I'm right. eat all week long and so you know I don't binge like and then matters. it's it's well, right and then it's like if you're eating all the the healthy stuff throughout the week and it's stuff that you actually like and then it, you're almost you don't go as crazy on the weekends because it's like right. I, I don't feel like I have to I don't I don't feel deprived of the nutrients that you know I, I don't feel like I'm starving myself so I don't need to go crazy but you know, usually it comes in the form of, oh, I'll get a, I'll get a turkey sandwich today, or I'll, you know, and and I might have a chip or two, or, or a bag of chips or something like that. Um, but that's that's about as much. I want. I definitely, I'm not ch uh, going to a Waffle House and like getting you know pancakes and stuff like that and going that crazy with it. So. So I'm curious. So from here, where do you go? Like you've 
you know, it sounds like you, you had a goal of, of 175 and you've made a lot of progress toward that. Mm-hmm. And wh- where, where do you think you'll end up? And, and once you get to where you want to be, how do you, how do you, what's your plan for staying there or yeah. adjusting what you're doing now so that you stop losing weight? Because this actually happens a lot. It's really common. I have many friends who that just can't, totally, stop losing. They can't stop losing weight. And, you know, they'll call me and be like, what do I do? I'm like, eat more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not that hard. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm, my goal was 175. I may see it through to a little bit more. I actually I did some research on like, okay, a guy my height should probably weigh around 165, 170. So I'll probably kind of go a little bit more with that. But then I want to start looking at um, lifting weights, doing some stuff like that. But that'll get my weight back up, but it'll also burn more fat. So it'll. It, I think that that's kind of my next step is now that I've I've done all of the cardio to lose a lot of, uh, and a lot of the diet stuff to lose a lot of the weight, but that's not all I can do, I think. So that's, de- I haven't joined a gym yet. I'm going to, I think. Um, and, and that'll just be something I do maybe every other day to, to, to take it that extra, that extra a little bit. Um, and then as far as maintaining it, I, I'm really kind of playing this by ear, like uh, this whole, you know, me losing weight has just been by, you know, experimenting and finding things that I like and reading a few books and uh, watching a couple documentaries that were really helpful. But I feel like, um, and I've even kind of tested this where I've kind of stopped losing weight uh, for about a week, uh, a week or so ago. And I was like, well, what happens if I just do this, if I run only two or three times a week and, and keep my diet the same, does that mean I gain weight or, or does it stay the same? So I'm just kind of playing around and seeing what, what works for me specifically because I'm, sure, um, I'm not sure what will until I actually try. So. Sure. And I think I imagine you'll find that that will change over time as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I, got, I used to be like one of those people where I was – counting my calories and I was down, I was eating like, if I could keep under 1200 calories a day, I, like I felt like that was good. Right. And now I, because I, of all the changes I've made, I work out a lot more. I, I lift weights. I'm a lot stronger. I weigh 10 pounds less, but I eat easily 2,300 calories a day. Like I eat a lot. Right. So that and might be, that might be my impetus to, to do more gym stuff. That means I can actually eat a little bit more more and and maintain the weight. So that's I'm all I'm very excited to start figuring that stuff out and start playing around with uh, what what works for me. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so are there any uh, have you noticed any other perks or I mean you said some friends are getting behind you, the ladies yeah. notice in a little more. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, and I think the biggest thing was uh, we went we were all out in Hawaii and there were a few people that didn't recognize me. Um, wow! In our crew, and they're like, they asked uh, our friend Anne, like, who was that? Because I can't, I came to get something from Anne, and she was with her friends. I left, and she tells me later that they were asking who that was, and so that was that was a, that was one of my big like, whoa, this is this is actually working. I got a lot of compliments throughout that weekend, and that was kind of I, I was smiling the whole weekend, basically, just for many reasons. It was a beautiful wedding, and uh, I was getting a lot of really nice compliments from folks. So, congrats, dude! Um, that is. So yeah. awesome! That is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think that th- that's definitely a perk. Um, is is all the nice things people end up saying because they're noticing this change. They knew you, you know, at one point, and then they're seeing you working hard at something and doing this. And so that's that's meant a lot to me. Anytime anyone says anything, even if it's a tweet or a Facebook post, like it means a, a heck of a lot because it has been kind of like me just being determined to change something and. It's for it's happened relatively fast. I think four months is is a short amount of time. Um, and while it was happening, I, you know, I I didn't really realize that things were happening so fast until people did start to say stuff. I was like, oh wow, I'm already getting people. No, you know, I don't I didn't notice it because I, I I have to stare at my face every day. I'm not seeing the change gradually over time. But people that I that I see maybe once or twice a week, like they were noticing. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. So, do you have any uh, closing advice or starting advice or anything like that for people, fellow geeks that are yeah. in your situation, and you know, some simple points that you can give them to get started and help make right. it seem like it's not such a big task? Yeah, I can't stress enough. Like, if you're a geek like me and spend most of your time on the computer, to get something like a Fitbit 
or, or something like a jawbone up or anything that will let you track your activity. So you can actually kind of say, hey, okay, this thing says I'm, I'm doing this. Let's, let's up that every day. I think that, that me challenging myself is what really kicked this whole thing off. Um, and then there's great there's other great apps like the Nike Plus running app is has been the biggest thing for me because I can track you know while I'm running how many miles I've run and all that stuff or um, and that's that's been a big help as well but for me just turning it into a daily challenge uh, and a game that I can kind of like one of the best things the Nike app does is when you do beat a goal or a record of yours like they they tell you they're like hey you just ran your fastest mile. Or hey, this is your fastest uh, 1K, and the and people uh, and and the app will keep congratulating you. And that was sort of like you know I didn't have somebody there next to me saying that, but I had it in my ear uh, from an app, and that was that was really great. Um, That's amazing because uh, yeah. geeks like to fiddle with the gadgets anyway. So it yeah, like it's like app. I mean playing comparing it to video games. It's like getting an achievement every time you. Every, and I was and that's an achievement for something I actually did. I wasn't just sitting <laughs> on my couch. Um, so that's, uh, that was really good. And then once you're out and you're being active, you start seeing the benefits pretty much immediately. And then, you know, just for me, it was just an overall, like, what's the next thing that I can improve? What's the next thing that I can uh, do better? And, and that, was, that was really the whole thing, um, just finding little areas that I needed improvement in and, uh, and doing them. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you did a great job. You seems like you built some awesome lifelong habits to get your health style upgraded. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I've got to have you over sometime for some beats, I think. Yeah. So, that was one of the things for, um, in the, that my dad, my dad was like a beat hater. I was a beat hater too because I didn't grow up beating them. And uh, that was my like, I've tried like, beat juice. I've tried beat juice, but that's as far as I've gone with it. And, then, and I didn't really care for it, but I don't know. I'm not going to rule it out completely. No, you need some roasted beets with some cheese yeah. and some mints. Trust me. It's okay. I trust <laughs> you. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Graham, for joining us yeah. and for sharing your story. And uh, I'm, thank you. I'm excited to see where you end up by the end of the year. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye.